Okay, so I'm doing something a little different in this video. This is the first time I'm doing an IoT project, an Internet of Things project. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to build a, an automatic pet feeder uh, for my dog. Uh, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you might be knowing that I have a Shih Tzu. Uh, she's here, actually, she's taking a nap. Janu! Janu! <laughs> okay. Yeah, she's actually... She's taking a nap and I just pulled over to the video. She's very camera shy. So, yep, I'm going to build a, a pet feeder. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi Model B. I'm going to make use of it to build an automatic pet feeder, which I can control from an app on my phone. And whenever I click on feed, it must be able to feed my dog automatically so yeah that's about it so i've actually had this idea from many days uh you know whenever i had to leave her alone in the home i mean i don't leave her alone all the time but sometimes when i have to go out and when i have to leave her alone one thing that always bothers me is how do i feed her because i have to feed her on the time that's what i followed from when she was a puppy so i have to feed her at a specific time and with this project that i'm building that uh, makes it very easy for me because i can control the pet feeder from anywhere using the mobile app and i could just push one button and it will automatically feed her i don't know why all of a sudden until now my birds are quiet but as soon as i started recording they just started shaping this happens all the time you know i, I usually don't record in this home but the wi-fi is down at my place so i had to come down here to record the video but anyways honestly this is the first ever iot project that i'm doing i mean i didn't even do a project in my in my college because of this quarantine thing so yeah anyway i'm really excited to see how it will come out and also this video is sponsored by tuya so it's basically a IoT software using which you can control your IoT devices or your IoT projects from cloud. That is, you can just install an app on your uh, mobile phone or your smartphone and you could just control your devices from that uh, app. And you don't have to write code for that app at all. By making use of Tuya Link SDK, you can basically link your IoT devices to the cloud and you can control those devices from the cloud using your mobile app. And that's an awesome thing. It's very handy and you will see how much it helps this project, this particular project that I'm trying to build. So yeah, let's get started and let's start building the project. All right, so first let me discuss about all the components that I have here. First of all, this is a Raspberry Pi. It's a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. It has 2 GB RAM. The next big thing in this project is this pet dispenser so this i bought it from amazon so this is a container so if i put it like this okay this goes in right this like this so basically i can open this lid and i can put dog food in here and it will automatically dispense it it doesn't have any any mechanisms or any doors or something it is an automatic dispenser which means as long as there is food inside this container it will be it will be dispensed just like that without any regulation so i'm going to modify this in such a way that the food will be dispensed only when i push the button on my mobile app only then the food will be dispensed and it will come into this container. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make use of some cardboard. This is some cardboard that I got and I'm going to make use of this servo motor. So this is a servo motor which I can basically connect to the Raspberry Pi and I can control. Oh, okay, if you can see, yeah. So I can connect this to the Raspberry Pi and I can control this mechanical arm by writing code and running it on the Raspberry Pi. So I can basically make it rotate 180 degrees maximum and that should be enough for this project so my idea was to attach this servo motor to this cardboard i'm obviously going to cut this cardboard it's not going to be as big as this mostly i'm going to cut this into a circle so that it can fit inside the container and i'm going to attach the servo motor to this cardboard so that it will rotate so it will be placed inside this container and I'm going to make a small pit or a small hole in the, in, in the cardboard. Basically, I'm going to create two states. One is a closed state where the food will be blocked and the food will not be dispensed uh, into this container. The second one is an open state and the open state will be achieved when the servo motor rotates 180 degrees, which will basically rotate the part of the cardboard which has hole uh, into the open state so that the food will flow through that hole and it will come into this container. In other words, the food will be dispensed. 
And as I said, this can be controlled by writing code on Raspberry Pi. So yeah, I think, I think that's the simple idea I have right now. Anyway, so once we have assembled everything, once we have written our code, we'll make use of uh, Tuya Link SDK to link this project to the cloud so that I can access it or I can control it from my mobile app. So let's start by making a cut on this cardboard right here. Okay, so now that the circle is cut, let me connect the servo motor to the Raspberry Pi and let's test it with some sample code. It has three wires, power, ground and signal. So I referred to the pin diagram of the Raspberry Pi 4 and I carefully connected the power wire to the power pin, ground wire to the ground pin and the signal wire to the GPIO pin 17. So I will now power up the Pi and you can see the lights that indicate that it is booting up. I'm connecting to my Pi using SSH from my Windows computer and here is a sample Python code to test the servo motor. It basically first rotates the motor to its maximum position and then waits some time and then rotates back to its minimum position. It keeps doing this in an infinite loop. As I said, this is just some basic code to see if our connection is correct and to check whether the motor is working. So let me execute this Python script. And there you go, the motor is rotating as expected. So that means our connection is successful and we can now control the motor from the Raspberry Pi. I will now attach the cardboard to the motor using a screw that was given with the motor itself. And I will place this cardboard circle inside the container by actually taping the motor with a two-way tape to the base. And now we have a rotating circle cardboard inside the container. The next thing is to make a pit on the cardboard so that I can create an open state for the food to flow. So I will cut approximately one by fourth of this circle and this creates an open state, but there is no closed state yet, which means the food will continue to flow from the pit. We have to come up with a way to actually block the food from flowing. So in order to actually create a closed state to block the food, I hot glued another piece of cardboard on one side of the container so that the food won't flow from that side. So now I have an open state where the food will flow and a closed state where the food will be blocked. And coming to the code, I took this from explainingcomputers.com and it basically takes the angle to rotate as an input and then rotates the servo motor to that angle from its initial position. And this code is more handy because we can rotate the motor to whatever the angle we like from zero to 180 degrees. Instead of just rotating it either to its minimum position or to its maximum position, like the previous code. Okay, let us now test this with actual dog food. I filled the container with dog food and now I'll run the Python script and I will input the angle to rotate and there you go, the food is dispensed when I rotated the motor to the open state. Cool. And similarly, I can rotate the motor back to its closed state and the food will not be dispensed anymore. So, yep, we just implemented our idea. All right, I will now link this to Tuya with Link SDK so that I can control it from my smartphone. You can use Tuya for any of your projects. So, actually, consider this as a tutorial on how to set it up for your own project. So first go to tuya.com and register for an account and now click on create to create a new product and you can see a lot of device that Tuya supports. In my case, I want to connect my Raspberry Pi which is not listed in these devices. So I will scroll down and select can't find the category. And here I'll fill all the details, the product name, I'll put it as Raspberry Pi 4B. I will set the protocol as Wi-Fi and the power type as standard power consumption and finally click create. Now that your product is created, you can start creating custom functions. Basically using custom functions, you can send and receive data to and from your Raspberry Pi or from your device. So click on create and choose a name for your data point. I will just set it as feed. And for the identifier, I will give it feed underscore door because using this function, I will actually send and receive data about my cardboard pit that has an open and closed state, just like a door. So I'll be calling it a door from now on. 
Anyway, so I will choose the data type as Boolean because it can only either be open slash true or close slash false. For the data transfer type, I will choose send and report, which means the data can be reported from my Raspberry Pi to Toya Cloud and it can also be sent from to your cloud to the Raspberry Pi. Finally, click OK to create the custom function and there we go. Now we need to get the hardware license and do not worry because it's completely free and you don't even have to provide your credit card details to get the license. You can just go to hardware development tab, select link SDK and then select general CPU hardware. You will now get the option to get two free licenses. So just click on it and then confirm the transactions. You don't have to pay anything or you don't have to give any payment information as well. It's completely free. So once the order is placed, click on details and then select download license list. This will download an Excel file with the two free licenses that are assigned to you. All right, that's it. Now we have completely set up our project on Tuya IoT platform. Now I'll have to install the Tuya Link Python SDK on my Raspberry Pi so that it can communicate with Tuya Cloud. So you can go to this GitHub repo, which will be in the description below, and you can find the instructions here on how to install this on your machine. So I will come back to my Raspberry Pi SSH session, and I will first clone this repo with Git. And once it's cloned, I can just install the downloaded source by using pip. After it is done installing, you can come to the examples directory inside the repo and here you will find a file called outlet.py. This is some base code to interact with Tuya Cloud and we can simply start writing our own code on top of this and it will be easier. I will open this with a nano editor and the first thing I need to do here is to change the Tuya configuration to my own which means I have to change the product ID, the UUID and the auth key. You can find your product ID if you go to your Tua dashboard. There will be a field that says PID for each of the products that you added. So I will just copy mine and then paste it in the code. Now for the UUID and the auth key, just open the licenses file you have just downloaded and then just copy paste the UUID and its corresponding auth key into these fields. And that's it. Before running this script, I need to first design the UI for the smartphone app, which I'll be opening on my smartphone. So to do that, go back to your Tuya dashboard and click device panel and then select create blank panel. This will bring you to a UI editor where you can actually create and edit the UI for your app. On the left side, you can see all the UI elements available for you to include in your app based on the custom functions that you have created. So since I have one custom function that deals with Boolean values, I will use this toggle element to control the open and closed state of the door, or in other words, the cardboard. So you can customize your elements the way you want. You can change the text, you can change the font, you can change the icons, their size, their background color, and so on. You have full ability to customize it the way you want. I will also add a button for this so that I can either push the button to toggle the state of the door or I can just directly use the toggle element to do the same. So once you're done designing the UI, you can just click release and this will release your UI panel. It's gonna take a little bit of time, like two to three minutes for it to release your UI. So yeah, okay, so let me now run the Python script and this will give me a QR code which I need to scan from my smartphone. I will open my smartphone and I need an app called Smart Life developed by Tuya, which is available on both Play Store and App Store. So you can download it irrespective of whether you're using an Android or an iPhone. So once it's installed, you can open it and you will find an option to add a device. Just click on it and then click on the scan icon on the top right corner of the app. This will open your camera. So just scan the QR code displayed by your Python script with this app and the device will now be added. I can now use this UI from my iPhone. So if I toggle the element or click the feed button, the corresponding Boolean value will be sent to my Raspberry Pi where my Python script is running. And you can actually see the data points that are being sent by Tuya on the console itself. The next task is to integrate this code that communicates with Tuya with the code that is actually responsible to control the server motor. And it is actually pretty simple. I just created a new Python script that has the function to either open the door or close the door based on the parameter that is passed to it. And then I included this in outlet.py and I wrote a condition where if the data point 101, which again references the custom function that we created to control the state of the door, if the value of this data point is true, it will make the pet feeder come to the open state by rotating the server motor. And if it's false, it will come back to the closed state by again rotating the motor. 
and that's it it's very simple a simple condition now before we test it i wanted to add another custom function so that i can actually see the last fed time on the app itself so i went back to my tui dashboard and then i created a new custom function and named it last fed time and i set the data type as string because this will contain the actual date and time which would be a string and then i set it to report only because it will only be reported by the raspberry pi to tuya it doesn't have to be the other way around i also have to edit the ui to include this newly added function so i just added a new ui element that will just display the received time on the app and coming back to the code i added some lines where i use the date library to get the current date and time and then format it neatly and then report it to tuya by making use of its data point id which is 102 and that's it now i can control the pet feeder directly from my smartphone using the smart life app and it now also reports the time at which the pet was last fed or in other words the time when the door was last opened we are almost done but there's one more thing that i want to add to this project to make it even more capable and that is by adding a sensor to detect the movement of my dog near the pet feeder and dispense the food manually whenever it detects the movement instead of just waiting for my input. So in order to do this, I got an infrared sensor and I connected it to the Raspberry Pi and made some more code changes to incorporate this sensor and detect movements with it. Back into your dashboard, I will create another custom function with the name manual mode, the data type boolean and the data transfer type as report only. Basically, when the manual mode is on slash true, the pet feeder will manually come to the open state whenever it detects the movement of the dog near it, hence dispensing the food. It then waits for two seconds and closes the door back, bringing it to the closed state again. And when the manual mode is off slash false, it waits for my input and only when I press the feed pet button, it will dispense the food. And hey, if you want to have a look at this code, you can find the link to the GitHub repo in the description below. So check it out. And that will be our final project. Let us now test it. So thanks for watching hope you liked this video if you did like it please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below also do subscribe if you are not yet a subscriber and also turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates from my channel and also make sure you check out tuya you can use it for any of your iot projects and it just makes the whole process a lot simpler you can easily connect your projects to the cloud and you can control them with a mobile app on your smartphone which is pretty awesome it's a very good iot platform and you should definitely check it out the link will be in the description once again thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video video until then cheers Jano hi hi